Hello, Mike Hako. My name is John DeFries, President and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism Authority, here today to speak to you as a child of this island, where my family's genealogy can be found on both my mother and my father's side. My maternal grandmother taught me something really important that I'll share with you at this time, and it pertained to the proverbial question, is the glass half full or half empty? A question that she actually thought was adolescent and somewhat arrogant. In her mind, and the lesson she wanted me to learn, was that the glass has always been 100% filled, half with the air we breathe, half with the fresh water we drink, and 100% of it is filled with light. And the importance of that was that you needed, I needed to learn how to value those things which were intangible the way I value things that are tangible. Because all three of these elements, breath, water, life, are all life-giving elements. And our ancestors, she reminded me, referred to that which we breathe as ha, and the waters we drink, vai. And E was a reference to the spirit or the light in the glass. And so in this very proverbial metaphor, in this lesson, is the very identity of who we are as an island, as a people, as a society, and as an entire state. And that lesson was given to me once by her. Uh, she is a child of Kealakekua Bay in the village of Kaavaloa in South Kona. She had a beautiful Hawaiian name that literally meant the mysteries of the universe, which as a child enabled me to appreciate both the modern science and technological advances found in daily life, as well as understanding that Hawaiians in our cosmological origins trace ourselves back to a place called Po, which I've deducted is that darkness that source of unending creation that preceded the Big Bang. And elements of that can be found in the first two lines of our creation chant, the Kumulipo, where heat altered the fundamental space and essentially in line two, the cosmos turned itself inside out. When you show a modern astronomer or physicist these first two lines, what they think of is the Big Bang, okay? And these lessons by grandma were given here at a place called Po'o Hawaii in Kahlu'u Kona. That cottage no longer stands there, but the pond does. And on the left side of the pond, back in 2006, I was sitting and having breakfast with my longtime friend, Pu'olani Kanahele, who at that time in 2006, embarked upon a body of work referred to as Papaku Makavalu, or a deeper understanding of the Kumulipo, those first two lines that I just showed you. The Kumulipo is the beginning of a Hawaiian understanding of our cosmological origins. It is where we came from, it is where humanity came from, it is where all of life came from. And this will give you a sense of where this fits in the historical timeline relative to Darwin's work as well. What Pua's work reminded us is that in the Hawaiian world, there were three houses of ancestral knowledge. Knowledge of the cosmos, knowledge of the earth and the planet, and knowledge of all living systems and ways of life on the planet and throughout the universe. It gave me a deeper appreciation that this island in its uniqueness was a portal to the cosmos, given the fact that we have the best Earth-based astronomical center on the planet. We had a portal to the core of the Earth, which expresses itself consistently at the volcanoes. We also live in a place that has some of the most diverse climate zones, excluding only polar tundra and Sahara and we have a wealth of indigenous knowledge 
in a future filled with science and technological advances. These two gentlemen came to Hawaii first as visitors. And back in August of 2015, I spent two and a half hours over lunch in what turned out to be not only an awesome experience, but really a mind-opening opportunity for the youngest in the group, myself, to be with Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, upon which Moore's Law is built, and Earl Bach in Medtronics. I believe at that time Earl was age 91, now deceased, and Gordon Moore was age 87. What struck me about these two men, who basically altered the way we enjoy modern life today, everything we understand is digital technology, in part was built on platforms that Intel and Gordon Moore helped to pioneer. And Earl Bakken is the co-inventor of the pacemaker and the creator of the company Medtronics in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Between these two men, it was as if I was sitting with Henry Ford and Thomas Edison, and in the course of that lunch, I realized that they were the equivalent of their generation's version of those inventors. My point being that these two men came first as visitors and then eventually relocated here to spend the final years of their lives. They were at the forefront of what has become a move toward the Kohala Coast in particular on island of Hawaii of leaders of thought, leaders of global corporations, inventors, innovators who have found something on this island that gives them a sense of connection and a sense of joy. So now at the Tourism Authority, we're embarked upon a vision and a mission at this time critical to the reopening and the relaunch of Hawaii's economy. When I stepped into this role in September of 2019, I inherited a strategic plan with four pillars that you can see before you. Part of that execution of that plan required us to go into every island community to develop destination management action plans, which essentially is intended to give communities a voice in describing, in defining, in co-inventing a model of tourism that they feel is suitable for their community. Something that could actually sustain a way of life and the economy of these island communities. And here on Hawaii Island, that destination management action plan is not only completed, but the first phase of a three-year uh, phase, three-year phase is now underway with actionable items, priorities that have been established, and a schedule of funding that we are responsible at the Tourism Authority for furnishing. What we have also discovered in this process is that we need to refine our strategic plan thinking that not only are we on a track toward responsible tourism, but we have an obligation to now refine it and bring a focus to a regenerative model of tourism. One that is seeking to balance the economics of our industry with the well-being, the health, the resiliency of our communities and our natural resources. To help us, we have relationships established with folks like Aina Aloha Economic Futures. In June 2020, the board at HTA signed this declaration, basically making it a signatory to a declaration on a community-driven process that Aina Aloha is responsible for. In the strategic plan, it identifies Hawaii green growth the public-private partnership and backbone organization of the Aloha Plus Challenge. Six goals in sustainability to be achieved by the year 2030.
Here you see a snapshot of a, the dashboard because you need to be able to monitor and measure anything that we are trying to change and manage. And this dashboard is evolving. What's important to know is that Hawaii Green Growth and the Aloha Plus Challenge preceded the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations by roughly 15 months. These 17 goals clearly outlined provide the global agenda under which Hawaii Green Growth as a local 2030 hub of the United Nations is unleashing and driving a local agenda that will fit firmly into this worldwide agenda developed by the UN. <clears throat> when I saw this image, it made me realize that tourism actually, instead of being the antithesis of a diversified economy, could actually drive diversification if we brought an intense focus into the 17 goals outlined in the UN's sustainable development agenda and would be consistent with the commitment that we have made to the Aloha Plus Challenge and Hawaii Green Growth. All of this brings me back to one of my mentors. This is a descendant of the high chiefs of Kohala on this island, Kenneth Brown, who said one day to all of us, what Hawaii needs is a dream. And he encouraged us to dream big. And at that time, in his career, Kenneth was the board chairman of each of these organizations that you see before you. If you have any idea of what the individual missions are for these organizations, you will know that in order to chair the board, you have to have the bandwidth, a sense of imagination, a sense of connection, the ability to interweave it into a coherent vision of what the future might look like. And one of the visions he saw was something he called the Global Village. And he launched four conversations around Native Hawaiian priorities at Kapiko Lokahe, health and wellness, which resulted in part through the North Hawaii Community Hospital. He envisioned the Center for a Sustainable Future. And this goes back to conversations in 1991. And he also understood the importance of recognizing the cultural uniqueness of every country and every peoples on the planet. That we could not walk around the world perceiving that everybody in the world thinks like Americans. And he cautioned us about this. And dialogue of civilizations was a means by which to emphasize that we needed to make a cultural connection with one another before we made transactional agreements. And this would affect the geopolitical environment of the world and result in much more cooperation and better collaboration among the nations of the world. So when you add all of this up, the Sustainable Development Goals, Ainaloha Economic Futures, Hawaii Green Growth, you add the vision of Kenneth Brown, and you take a look at a distant model in Davos, Switzerland every year where heads of state, philanthropists, global CEOs, thought leaders, artists, all of these classifications were embodied in the Kenneth Brown vision of the global village. And every year when this event occurs in Davos, I think of Kenny. And so is the dream a Davos of the Pacific on the Kohala coast? Annually, instead of focused wholly on the economics of the world, focused purely on sustainability, focused on modern science and technology, focused on indigenous wisdom and traditional practices. Is that opportunity before us? And who would be interested in this? If your organization is on this list, it's because you're already doing this work. And we need to get out of our silos and we need to stop treating this as a series of one-offs and start to weave the minds, the intent, 
the outcomes into something meaningful for Hawaii Island, for the state of Hawaii, for Asia Pacific, and the world. And I suggest that it comes in the form of an annual forum that brings the brightest, the best intentioned, the most innovative, and those who are prepared to serve a higher purpose for humanity. A number of these people are already here. Genealogically, they arrived generations ago, and some arrived in years recent. We will find a way to invite them into this space. The frequency of meeting annually is essential to having Hawaii Island recognized as an innovations platform upon which the best of technologies related to sustainability can be developed, applied at scale, and exported. And that will help drive our new economy. That will help us fulfill this mantra and this obligation of caring for our beloved home. Thank you.